Hi, and welcome to the show where we share the stories of the many who intersect with our healthcare system but are rarely heard from. My name is Kevin Poe, founder and editor of Kevin MD. And today we have a power trio with us. We have Isabel Rosenthal, who is a psychiatry resident, Dan Artiega, who is an internal medicine resident, and Lauren Tronic, who is a medical student. And together, they are the founders of Well Rounded, which is a podcast by trainees for trainees and explores the health business, and policy in the United States. Their mission is to empower clinical trainees and young professionals who want to learn more about the U.S. healthcare system. And Isabel, we're going to start with you. Is that all correct? Yeah, no, it is. Um, you know, we when we started this podcast a year ago, none of us could have predicted um, how understanding the infrastructure of our healthcare system would become more and more important and is really just critical to trainees, especially right now during the COVID-19 pandemic. So you and Dan wrote an article on Kevin MD, and thank you very much. And it was titled, <laughs> Medical Trainees Need Knowledge and Education on Healthcare Systems and Policy. So Dan, can you go a little bit more into the article and uh, explain why you and Isabel wrote it? Yeah, um, you know, the reason we wrote the articles is really the same reason that we started to create the podcast which is, you know, Isabel and I met in business school. Um, and when we both went back to medical school, we had this aha moment, um, which was, you know, all of these topics that were critical to delivery of care to vulnerable patients um, were, were being taught in business school and probably in uh, public health programs as well, but were not being taught in medical schools. Um, and so what we wanted to do was let people know, you know, those topics are important and they affect patient care in real ways. Um, and it's kind of our responsibility as physicians and, and uh, other clinicians to learn about those topics so that we can make care better for patients. So Isabel, you mentioned um, during the pandemic, um, it has made these topics even more important than they were. Can you explain a little bit about why? Yeah, I think, um, I think it's multifaceted. So one, physicians are actually like becoming leaders um, in a way that they haven't before. I think the public is really going to physicians to get information on the pandemic in new and different ways. Like people are going to Twitter to get, you know, news from individual physicians or emergency medicine doctors in New York who might be telling them more about the pandemic than the CDC website is. So I think that style of information is totally different. And then I think as residents, we are seeing that, you know, a healthcare system that may or may not have been prepared for what was a devastating pandemic. And clearly healthcare will be, you know, transformed by this pandemic. And I think that um, physicians should play a critical role in transforming the healthcare system. And I completely agree with you with that. And I think one thing that's really shocking to me is that how quick this all came on. Because back in early February, even the middle of February, things were running relatively status quo. And then within four to six weeks, things completely collapsed. And um, right now we're seeing frontline healthcare workers being furloughed and being laid off. And on the private physician Facebook groups, um, there are a lot of questions from doctors who just aren't expecting this. And just having that background in the business of medicine and knowing um, the role of money in our healthcare system and, and how that plays a role into what they do, I think um, that probably would, that education probably would have come in very handy. Now, Lauren, um, you're in medical school. So tell me about um, how the business of medicine and how policy courses, what's their current role um, in our medical school system? Yeah, so I think that I am in a little bit of a unique situation in that we actually have two electives offered for first and second years called health policy and business and medicine. Um, but <laughs> I think that that is actually unusual. Um, and is as far as friends at other medical schools, it seems like it is uh, the exception, not the rule. Mm -hmm. Um, one of the biggest spaces for policy in medicine and medical school seems to be organized medicine and students that are involved in things like the AMA or in California, the CMA. And that's very specific because it is, you know, very political and it's amazing and interesting and it does bring together students from 
across the country, but it doesn't quite uh, give the this baseline education understanding of how the system actually works that I think is just missing and and should be much more integrated into our curriculum. Uh, so hopefully this this podcast is kind of filling in those those gaps and augmenting what is offered if we are lucky enough to have a an elective that does explain or, or give us an introduction. When I went to medical school about 20 years ago and there was probably five to 10 hours total in terms of health policy and in the business of medicine, if that. And at that time, there just wasn't much interest from the students. Now, Lauren, are you seeing um, acceptance from, from a lot of your medical student class? And do they realize how important this is as they move forward? Yeah, we had an event um, a couple months ago. Uh, my friend and I put on a, an event and um, over 100 people showed up. It was basically just about the state of healthcare and policy in 2020. And a lot of people showed up. So there is interest. And I know that, as Isabel was saying, with the pandemic, it's just skyrocketing because it's now almost become a necessity. It's not even just about interest anymore. It's about necessity. We need to know how this operates, how payment is working, when everything is remote, et cetera. So um, I think it's a really interesting transition from from interest to necessity. So Dan, how has the podcast been going over the last uh, six months or so? Have you been noticing any traction and and what kind of response are you getting from from your viewers and your fellow trainees? Yeah, um, six months is a, a little bit of an understatement. We we spent a lot of time kind of perfecting the craft uh, and putting all the right pieces together. Um, uh, Lauren does a fantastic job with our editing. We could not do this without her. Uh, and then uh, we also have a sound engineer named Tommy who, who really makes it sound professional at the end of the day. Um, so, you know, it takes, it has taken a, a whole team kind of a good bit of time to, um, to, to really make it what it is. Um, we have been really pleasantly surprised by how excited people are um, about the topics that, that, um, that we discuss, um, the people that we interview, um, you know, and it's folks who are not even always clinical trainees, you know, it's, mm -hmm. um, friends sharing it with friends and then, you know, and then we get great feedback on, um, it's like, you know, we love this, um, uh, but I wanted to hear a little bit more about that. Um, and so it kind of gives us new ideas for topics that kind of are on people's minds that we want to, uh, address in the future. Um, it's been more than anything, very, very fun. And, mm -hmm. and I hope that you're finding that, you know, it, as, as you start this podcast, that, that it's fun also. Um, I, I, uh, I think that, you know, we look forward to doing this as long as we can. Mm -hmm. Um, and we, we are just excited to see what, you know, the next interview brings, what the next topic brings. Um, uh, it's been really exciting. And Isabel, why, why a podcast of all the social media platforms? You know, you could have a YouTube channel, Facebook live stream, blog. Why did you guys choose a podcast of, uh, of all mediums? Yeah, so I think that um, we wanted something that was really accessible to training clinicians who, as we know, have very little free time. Mm -hmm. um, and as much as we're all packed for time, everyone I know listens to some sort of podcast. Um, especially because it's like, you know, 20, 30 minutes, everyone has some sort of commute to work. So it just seemed like something that would be easily accessible to our peers um, and was a medium that people were super comfortable with and um, that could just like add on to their commute. And um, that's why we thought it would work so well. Sure. And uh, Dan, I just want to get back to the article here about um, why trainees and medical students need healthcare system policies. Um, what are your solutions? What, what are some ideas that you have for the education system to implement this um, within the curriculum? Um, so, you know, something that I think that, um, you know, we've kind of noticed working in the hospital, you know, there are no medical students around. Um, Lauren's classes, you know, she can tell you, have gone pretty much all virtual. Mm -hmm. um, so kind of now seems like honestly a good opportunity to start looking to alternative kind of educational techniques um, and podcasts might actually help fill some of those gaps. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I think that um, right now is, is kind of a good time to 
start thinking about, you know, how the, the education of medical students is going to change because right now it kind of has to change. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I think that, uh, you know, medical students also are increasingly interested in these topics. Um, you know, I remember when, uh, when I was in medical school, um, there was kind of a health public, the health policy curriculum. Um, and, and there was maybe if kind of a, a few students who were really, really interested in it. Um, and by the time I graduated, it was kind of an expectation um, that medical school would, medical schools would provide the sort of education that, that people really want and need to, you know, address the big topics in healthcare. Um, I, I, uh, I say this all the time, but I think medical school does an excellent job of teaching you how to treat the person that is in front of you. Yeah. Um, I think that, uh, uh, you know, thinking about larger populations and delivering care to large groups of people, um, that, is, that is a place where we, you know, we, there's room for improvement. Um, and, you know, we hope that Well-Rounded becomes kind of one of those edu educational resources that helps fill in those gaps. And Lauren, do you have a message to medical students who may be listening to this? Where can they turn to if uh, they want to find more information about that business side of medicine and on health policy? Well, first, I would turn them and give them well-rounded. Sure. <laughs> um, and but but really, we are trying to do a wide array of topics. You know, from how information pseudoscience narratives spread online to what is the economics of the American emergency room from you know arrival through the doors to discharge. And these are just things that it's obviously quite a wide gamut from economics to treatment to internet <laughs> pseudoscience. Sure. Um, but, we're, but we're trying to, to do um, a thorough investigation of, of all of these topics. All right, and uh, Isabel, what's the take home message um, that you wanna share with the uh, Kevin MD audience? Yeah, you know, I think that as we are all sort of in this scary time, um, the thing that makes me excited for the future is that I do think medicine will be different and better because of the challenge that we're all facing as providers right now during this pandemic. And um, I really hope that the Well-Rounded Podcast can begin to give you guys some basic tools to start thinking about a system that is going to be overhauled and how we can build a healthcare system that provides the best care for patients and also, um, you know, is rewarding for the healthcare providers within the system. Um, so I'm excited for what the future of healthcare will look like. And I think we're going to see, you know, an increase in telemedicine. And I'm really excited for that. Um, and so I think there will be some exciting outcomes of this pandemic um, in the midst of all this, you know, destruction and um, tragedy. Well, I, I agree with you there, especially when it comes to virtual medicine. Uh, I'm in primary care. I do primary care internal medicine. And 100% of my visits now are virtual. And even when the pandemic ends, like if there is a proverbial silver lining, is that I think virtual medicine will be here to stay. A lot of my patients find it tremendously convenient that they don't have to trudge to the exam room all the time just for routine health. So if there is one silver lining from the pandemic is that virtual medicine will certainly persist. Well, I want to thank all of you for coming on to the show. Once again, we have been chatting with Isabel Rosenthal, Dan Artiega, and Lauren Tronic. Together, they are the team behind Well-Rounded, which is a fantastic podcast that I highly recommend. And thank you very much for joining me. Thank you thank so you. much for having us.